Today I want to look at the structure for um, how I am syncing in changes for my game and also just kind of the NPCs that are flying around here too. I just kind of want to show what I've done for it. Um, so as you can see right now I'm flying around. This is completely offline um, and I'm just fighting a, a group of ships. There's 31 NPCs and then there's me, so 32 players in the game. Um, so yeah, 16 versus 16. Uh, and it, it, it runs pretty well. And it was a lot of fun to try to figure out how to get these ships to actually work and fight each other. So I want to look into how that's done too. All right, so let me uh, stop that. And um, so what I'm going to bring up is a, a few different things. So first I'm going to bring up um, both my code base, but then I'm also going to bring up my um, behavior trees to show how that's working. So let me go to the code first. Uh, and I'll close out of all of these for now. So the structure for Galaxy Warriors is not as trivial as it was at the beginning. Um, the problem is that Galaxy Warriors is split up into two places. We have the lobby place, which was kind of also a scratch pad for us kind of compiling models and they all get automatically removed when the game starts. But that's kind of where we dump our models in to kind of make sure they're configured right and everything. Um, and then we have the actual game place that you're teleported to that runs the round. So uh, right away we've got two separate places, but we have a lot of shared code between the two. So we can't just you know, create two separate games and run with it. There's a lot of things that we need synced between the two places, especially data. So making sure that our data structure um, that's saved per player is the same and we have the same API accessing it, that's important. So we're using Roho, of course, um, to sync all of our data through, uh, which if you haven't used, Roho is an incredible tool that lets you sync your code between an external source like VS Code here and Roblox Studio. So super cool, highly recommend it using it if you really wanna dive into the professional side of game development here. So uh, within my structure here, we'll see quite a few things in the, in the directory structure. And I'll, I'll zoom in here a little bit to make it more obvious or easier to see. So we have assets, which this is not very important. It's just kind of a, a directory dump of various assets for the game. It really has no bearing on anything. Um, I have an old version of the game. We actually built this game a year ago um, and it was on my old Air Game Framework um, platform and we completely scrapped it. We decided, you know, well, it was more of my decision, but I decided, you know, it's this isn't working. Uh, it's not dynamic enough for what we need here. Let's start over. Um, so literally started from scratch. Um, and so now we have what we have today. Uh, we have an images file, which really this should just go under assets. I don't know why it's sitting there. Node modules is pointless. Uh, source is the most important thing here, right? So we have quite a few things here. We have first our framework. Um, so I'm using knit, which is my kind of um, new framework that I, I use instead of AGF anymore. Uh, so anytime knit gets updated, I can kind of throw it in here. Really what I could do instead of having this all the files directly in here, I could drop this in as an rbxmx file, uh, which is a, a model file. Um, but for now, I kind of like being able to look at the code directly when I'm trying to reference things instead of having to go to documentation pages. So I just keep the source there for now. I can just drop in a new directory if I update. Um, and then we have the source directories for both the game and the lobby, and then we have shared. So now the shared code is stuff that goes to both game and lobby, and all of that is um, dictated through our uh, project JSON files for Roho, and we have one for the game, one for the lobby. Um, I believe you can create a, a shared project JSON file too, and then include the into these. I, I haven't done that yet, but I'll probably will do that soon if it's possible. Um, and so let me dive into some of this first. So, for instance, uh, let's start with the lobby. It's a smaller code base. I, I split things up into to three sections: client, server, and shared. So client is anything that only exists on the client, server is only server side code, and then shared are you know, mo code modules that exist that I want to be able to be accessed by both the server and client. So right now under shared for the lobby, I only have a config file and that's it, nothing much. Um, but the server and client can access that whenever. Now it's not synchronized between the two, that's an important thing. That obviously, you know, 
if you require a module on the server, that's a different um, actual object than if you require it on the, on the client, but that's besides the point. Um, in the client, I break up into actually kind of a few different things here. So we have begin, which these are just things that are thrown into replicated first. Um, and then I have player, which are things thrown into starter player scripts. Um, and then everything in here goes into that. Uh, I, in some other instances of knit, I also have a character, which goes into the starter character folder. Um, but in Galaxy Warriors, we don't have anything like that. We don't use a character, so that's pointless. Um, so that's kind of the client setup. On the server, it's a kind of similar thing, but again, we're not splitting it between replicated first and stuff like that. We just have things thrown right here. Um, but we have components, we have modules, we have services. Services are just kind of high level um, singletons that provide a, a service to the game, pretty standard. Modules are literally just module scripts, nothing fancy. Components are more fancy. They're actual components constructed from a NITS component system. So components, yeah, they're really cool. Um, these are gonna let you kind of wrap uh, code around certain objects in the game automatically. Again, it's kind of like an extension to an object if you can think of it in that way. So that's that's pretty powerful. So we use that folder in order to populate items that uh, from those components. There are none within the lobby though there. So if you go to the, the game, we'll see that there's there's quite a few components. But so on the game side, it's the same structure. We've got client server shared. Um, server, we have quite a bit of components, a few modules, a few services. On the client, there's a, a ton of stuff. Um, I'm not really gonna go into that right now. So the way we get this into Studio though, it, you know, cause you can't really run more than one instance of Roho here uh, within VS Code. So if you have the Roho extension, uh, it, it's great, but it's it, it'll only run one project and it'll only run the default project JSON file. So that's a little limited. Now the way I'm doing it, if you can see here, I'm, I'm, I've actually got two instances of Roho running um, and I'm, I'm doing a little, well, it's hardly a trick. I'm just running two processes at the same time. And I'm using uh, a node uh, script called, uh, what's it called, concurrently? Yeah, right here, concurrently. And I'm able to run multiple things at the same time. And so if you see right here on Roho game and Roho lobby, I'm actually just writing or running the, the command directly here, Roho serve game project JSON and then Roho serve lobby. Um, and then I can use a wildcard on this concurrently process, Roho dash star. So anything that matches that as a script name within here will run at the same time. So if you can see there, Roho game, Roho lobby all fit that pattern. So both of these get run at the exact same time. Now I do have them separate on different ports. You have to do that. So my game one is on the default port my lobby one is on this default port minus one. So if I go to the lobby, if you go to Roho right here, you'll see it's listening on three, four, eight, seven, one. And then the game is listening on three or four, seven, two, three, four, eight, seven, two. So they're on different ports, just off by one, and it works just fine. Now I also have another item on that list there, if you, if you notice, this is kind of a weird one, Roho sync trees. And then I'm running something called Remodel. Remodel is an awesome open source project that uh, basically lets you, outside of Studio, load a place file or a model file and actually access it through dot notation or find first child, things we're used to, kind of a similar um, API. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a model from a place file and then creating a model out of it, uh, rbxmx file and then throwing it within my um, source structure so that it gets synced into my game. So let me let me get into more detail on that. So this, this starts to transition over to the decision trees or the behavior trees rather. So I'm using, uh, oh, where is it? The B-Trees plugin. This is made by quite a few different people. Um, but on the left-hand side under server storage trees, I have a bunch of different trees here. Um, and this is awesome, 
but it has one limitation. So I, I'm, I have this open in a different place file purposefully. I want to, you know, any code that I'm writing, I want to make sure that's within Studio or within a VS Code. But this limitation, this plugin right here is I, I have to be within Studio. So for instance, I have a decide bullet type task right here. If I click edit, it's going to open up the module script that uh, defines this task. That's that's fine, right? And so my, my main code is just right there. It's just a, a simple random switch between three different uh, bullet types. So that's nice and fine. But the question is, well, how do I get that over to my game? This is a completely separate file here. Uh, one option would be just to build this graph within my game. But the problem is that gets away from uh, having it synced in through Roho. And I, I don't want to avoid that for the various reasons of uh, source control and other things. Uh, so I want to be able to get the code that's in here over to VS Code somehow. Um, and I was debating how to do this for a while. I almost decided I'm going to build my own version of this plugin within VS Code uh, just to do it. Uh, but that would have taken weeks. Uh, so I didn't have weeks. I had you know days to, to figure this out, at least a day. So my, my other option that I figured out would work was um, I'll save this as a RBXL or rbxlx file, which is the XML format, not the binary format of a place file. And then I'll use remodel to load this file. And then once it's loaded, it'll find this trees folder. <laughs> Ignore everything there. Uh, it'll, it'll find this trees folder. It'll extract that, save it as a rbxmx file within my source here and then it'll be able to sync back into my game. So let, let, let me walk through that a little bit more. So again, I have, I'll, I'll, I'll do this source and the destination. So I have my source, which is this trees folder, and I somehow want to migrate this trees folder over to Galaxy Warriors, and then I believe it's replicated storage, game shared trees. Right. Okay. So I somehow had to migrate from this place file over to here, and that was the trick. That that was you know, rather the challenge. I needed to figure out how to do that. Uh, ended up being not very hard. So again, this is saved as an RBX LX file. It exists right somewhere, right here, NPC behavior RBX LX. So this is my place file. Doesn't matter what it looks like. It's just a XML file. But then. What I can do is I have this sync behavior trees Lua file. It's three lines of code. So I load that file in. And again, I'm using remodel to do this. And then I reference that trees folder. Again, that's this file folder right here. And then I write that model file to this location. And this is in my source tree. So if I go to source, GW game shared, I'll see my trees.rbxmx file. So this is a model file that contains everything that was here, which is pretty cool. And because that's within my Roho structure there, it automatically then gets synced to here. So that's nice. Now the, the last piece of the puzzle there is kind of automating it a little bit more, where if I make a change over here in my tree, um, how do I replicate that change immediately over to here within this tree? Now, by default, if I wanted to do that, I'd have to go over to uh, VS Code here and rerun this sync behavior trees file every time, which, just, I mean, it's not hard, it's remodel and then sync behavior trees Lua. and uh, well I forgot the run command so pretty simple done um, but I don't want to do that every time you know I'll probably forget to do that so what I did instead is I added a file watcher within uh, node which is you know not very hard I think I, I probably just googled most of this and got it so you know it's, it's pretty simple but I have my file name that I'm listening for which is that place file 
And then I have file system watch uh, linked to my file name here. So anytime my file name changes, it'll check if it's changed and it'll do that by reading the MD5 signature of the file, um, which you know it's, it doesn't really matter what this does, but it's, it's basically a hash of the contents of the file. So if, if I make a change, but the contents are the same, so for instance, if I just keep on clicking Control S on the file, but I don't make any changes, the MD file hash will be the same. So if we notice that the, the, the file hash is the same, we know that it hasn't changed, so we're just gonna stop. Um, otherwise, we will run remodel, which is right here. So we just use the spawn process function here within Node, uh, which is you know the under child process library. And we just run that command. So you'll see this looks exactly the same as I had down here in the command line. Your model run and then the script. So the same thing. And then there's just a bunch of jargon here to, to capture the output just to make sure if there's any errors, I cache them. Um, and that's it. So then it's just a matter of running this file, which we go back to the package JSON file. If you remember me talking about sync, um, I'm also including the Roho sync trees file, which runs node behavior trees watcher.js. So really, actually, I don't need this first part here um, because that is run right away anyway. So there we go. That is the whole process of uh, my setup for my code base for Galaxy Warriors. Um, and that's how I'm using behavior trees in order to uh, create the, the NPCs that fly around now this is still a work in process, but it is pretty fun. So maybe I'll just look at it really quick. If anyone's interested, I'll make another one on uh, how this all works.